Dr. Alexander uh, Starusiva Pirsheva and uh, Dr. Tatiana Fadeva, both uh, assistant professors at the Art and Design School, Higher School of Economics, Moscow, who are going to talk about a very relevant uh, topic because. Uh, Yes, this is the place we uh, have become so familiar with, you know, we moved to this new flat of ours called Zoom. So the colleagues are going to talk about this experience. See you in Zoom, digitally extended presence as a new normal. So Tatiana, Alexander, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Ludmila. Thank you for your introduction. Uh, we are going to make our little presentation here. Just a moment, I'm going to demonstrate the screen. Here we go. So uh, thank you so much for paying your attention. Uh, our paper is devoted, as Admila said, uh, to digitally extended presence, which currently becomes the new normal. Uh, our aim, uh, the aim of our issue was to compare uh, the experience uh, which uh, we tend uh, to have uh, in art uh, sphere, in the places of art, such as museums, gallery spaces, and educational uh, locations as well, uh, to compare that experience before the lockdown and after, let's say, the way we tended to communicate, uh, to um, talk uh, about uh, art, uh, to, um, how to say, uh, to, to watch art uh, before uh, we went online and afterwards. And uh, we should uh, point out the strategies of how we cope with it, how institutions cope with it, and uh, how it works in 2020 and what we can do better in 2029. Okay, so now I'm passing the word to Tatiana. Uh, thank you, Alexandra. So uh, here, Alex, yes. uh, I'm sorry, Tatiana, could you please uh, make your presentation full screen? Uh, so uh, could you please no? do it? No. Okay, maybe okay. I can... I don't think so, because it, it won't look good. You see, PowerPoint oh. is such a thing which doesn't look very good if I make it full screen. Well, I can try. Okay. I'm not, not sure about you, it. You try. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Let's do it like this. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, it looks good to me. Although we can see your uh, subsequent slide. If it's not good, then just do it the way uh, you prefer. So it's up to you. Oh, I think th this looks better. Okay, well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, the challenge uh, is to seize the look of new normal and still reflect, re reflect upon its uh, consequences. And uh, let's talk about its consequences. So uh, the spring, uh, the spring, both west and east uh, faced empty airports and railway stations, uh, closure of theaters and museums, cancelled concerts, postponement of cinema premieres, and the development of strategies of adaptation to the realities of the lockdown world. It demanded a light fast, lightning fast uh, transformation from all actors of uh, global society. And one of the means of such adaptation was a transition of all the significant activities uh, online and a search for the new formats of interaction via virtual platforms such as Zoom, and MS Teams, uh, etc. And this uh, re relocation to the online took place both at the level of individuals and institutions. Uh, during the pandemic, we have seen live streaming uh, live streaming performances of the Metropolitan Opera and the New York City Ballet, dance, thinking, acting, uh, happenings, etc. In the era of coronavirus, went online. We have lost uh, the immediacy of real bodily presence in real space, and gained the concept of a mediated body in a virtual space, as long as a new uh, sense of togetherness with other people via online communication. I mean, just look at us right now. <laughs> Um, and the art world had to adapt to new circumstances rapidly. Museums worldwide, such as Metropolitan, British Museum, uh, State Pushkin Museum, and many other institutions reacted to COVID-19 lockdown by offering uh, virtual visits and uh, enabling alternative paths for viewers to experience their exhibitions and collections, basing on online interactive experiences. However, there is a catch. Web transforms, um, web, right? It transforms special arts into temporal arts. Uh, online, we see every piece of art, including painting, sculpture, 
all objects and installations as a moving image, uh, temporal visual flux, which resembles uh, video art or a movie uh, accepting the loss of a flat screen. For example, in the early days of the pandemic, uh, a pandemic and I was witnessing it, uh, some museums streamed uh, images of paintings. And as this uh, caused bewilderment uh, to the audience, so this practice was quickly abandoned. Making a virtual tour of the museum halls without expert comments or showing a picture without a story told about it has little sense for the viewer. Uh, network, uh, the, network, the network space was uh, soon full of streams, online tours, lectures, seminars, discussions, webinars. But winning screens is a challenge. Museums found themselves forced to compete for the viewer's attention on a par uh, with U YouTube entertainment, video games, TV series, uh, news website, etc. Uh, the whole uh, internet backs basically. And in attempt to compete, some Art institutions placed, placed a bet on, on the scientific approach, uh, making videos which mostly resemble short and sometimes not too thoroughly prepared documentaries uh, or lecturing in Zoom. Such formats open up a perspective of museums entering the market of filmmakers and edutainment. Uh, for example, MoMA is acti uh, actively pursuing this path. Unfortunately, it may, um, may end up in losing the depth of both art analysis and the sensation of beauty. And on the other hand, there are online projects uh, that resemble not entertaining uh, content, but video art, uh, which Anna Tolstova points out in her uh, beautiful article for Commerçant. Uh, in comparison to the uh, to the cinema, video art has uh, has a sharper focus of critical reflection of media technologies and uh, the influence it has on a viewer. For example, uh, we'll take a look at how film directors and artists treat time. Watching a movie as spectator dissolves in the uh, in the flow of storytelling. Uh, one forgets about time carried away by the twists and turns uh, of the plot. And video art, on the contrary, uh, tends to emphasize the passage of time and keeps the spectator awake. Uh, Christian Marclay uh, made it clear in the clock, uh, you see it on the slide. Uh, it, it is a video assembled from uh, 12,000 uh, movie clips uh, showing time. Uh, as the artist explained, uh, it is composed of moments from the past, but the ever-moving clock that matches your real-time places emphasis on the present helping the viewer to be re reflective uh, about the viewing process. And following this reflective track, the State Pushkin Museum Media, Museum's Media Art Department launched a project, uh, uh, 100 Waves to Live a mi Minute, which resembles video, video in artistic strategy. Within the framework of this project, artists, curators, and art critics uh, talk about, uh, talked about it, uh, talk, uh, talked about their experiences of spending time meaningfully, and offered uh, the viewer an opportunity to develop his strategies for uh, his or her their strategies for meaningful interaction uh, with the here and now. Uh, also, within the framework of the project 100 Ways to Live a Minute, uh, there is a digital exchange. Uh, exchange exchange section, exclusive screenings of media art by the world's largest uh, artists who work with the teams uh, of time perceptions. Uh, piece, pieces of Gary Hill, uh, Clement Kajetor, uh, Taus Mahacheva and many other media artists were opened to, to the public for a day, a limited time to spend wisely. And it is the logic of critical viewing of the art consuming process that distinguishes a well curated piece from entertaining content on the internet. Uh, and uh, one more thing uh, uh, we, we, uh, we need to, <laughs> uh, to discuss it as well. 
it's a museum. Museum. Uh, currently, there is a discussion unfolding about the attitudes to design uh, of museum uh, premises. Due to the ep uh, epidemiological situation, re restrictions, uh, restrictions and social distancing have been introduced in most museums worldwide. For example, when we, when Alexandra and I visited the state uh, Hermitage three weeks ago, uh, we were faced an instruction to choose one of the two propo uh, proposed routes. And following it, we could neither make a turn nor come back. It uh, resembled in a, a video game in some sense with checkpoints uh, where you had to choose, say, between Rubens and Rembrandt, and it was hard. A viewer could see only one of them, and if he wanted to encounter the other, one had to start the route all over again. And one hit point was gone this time. <laughs> yes, yes, it was. So, uh, the stay safe measures will possibly change the way museums are functioning for a long time. Uh, shortly, it will not be possible to wander around an exposition. Uh, there is, however, a solution. For example, Peter uh, Zumter has recently designed for the Los Angeles County Museum, uh, Museum of Art a vast interior space uh, which interlinks the exterior and and indoor space. And among uh, other exciting proposals uh, are drive through exhibitions uh, such as Gok by Car, which I adore for some reason, and Alexandra hates, and we had words. <laughs> it allows uh, visitors to enjoy the beauty of digitized paintings, not even leaving uh, their cars. <laughs> Uh, I mean, what more could you wish for? <laughs> okay, thank you, and Alexandra, the floor is yours. You see, colleagues, uh, that case, that specific case with a goat by car or was actually our point of, uh, let's say, disconnection, uh, <laughs> the, the point of growth, actually, uh, in uh, our issue, uh, because that very love-hate <laughs> thing about goat by car drove us to another question, a question of what we have the technologies for. We discussed the ways uh, museums and other art institutions adapted to lockdown, uh, but having all that uh, great amount of strategies, we should um, understand, uh, we should evaluate how uh, this works next, uh, what that strategy leads to. Uh, and uh, it made us think uh, about something very, very, uh, let's say, well-known uh, about avant-garde and kitsch. I know what you're thinking. Uh, Clement Greenberg uh, lived uh, a little bit <laughs> earlier and all his uh, theories were connected with, let's say, the state of art world uh, in the 1950s and 60s. However, if we take just the idea, just the concept of avant-garde and kitsch uh, as a kind of two options that a viewer or uh, a producer or an art critics uh, or an institution has to choose between, we can find a very interesting, uh, let's say, opposition here. Uh, and uh, uh, we would like to focus on the very um, sense of what's going on. Some strategies uh, imply kitsch, let's say. And uh, kitsch is all about um, somehow um, revealing pain, let's say, revealing boredom. Uh, it's uh, a healing thing, but it heals you only for a little bit of time. And then you need some more more, let's say, TV shows, more popcorn, uh, more uh, movies that fascinate you, and so on. Uh, it's a little bit uh, like um, a necessity which can never be um, substituted. On the contrary, avant-garde is the thing uh, which makes one's sensibility more um, expanded, uh, more connected to the world here and now. Avant-garde is about new perspective, new ways of feeling, new ways of making sense of the world we live in. And I'm speaking not only about the historical avant-garde uh, of the beginning of the uh, 20th century, uh, I'm talking about the uh, concept itself, uh, the concept of uh, con <clears throat> contemporary development of how we make art, how we perceive art, and how we work with our own sensibility. What uh, Malevich, Tatlin, Mandrian was looking for, now we actually have to look for these things 
again, but having new technologies in our hands. And uh, that's why I think that once we take a look at the way institutions react to lockdown, uh, we can understand what these institutions are all about. For example, Pushkin Museum is all about uh, teaching us how to see video art, how to feel and think more about it. And that's why we, uh, with uh, Tatiana, we adore that project, 100 Ways to Live a Minute. On the other hand, um, the Gog by Car case <laughs> is the thing which I totally dislike because uh, it doesn't give us some genuine information about Van Gogh paintings. It gives us just some strange projection on walls which are not even very flat. So it's some kind of um, educational entertainment which uh, I, I don't quite see the point in all that actually. But as a medium, uh, it's a pretty good one. So we think uh, that it could be rethought, revisited artistically. And the case, uh, just to, to, to end it up, to sum it up, the case which uh, we with uh, Tatiana love <laughs> totally is the Burning Man. Uh, well, we all know that Burning Man, the festival, one, when things are being created, installed, and then burned. Uh, what did Burning Man do in the lockdown situation? Well, uh, it made a virtual city. It uh, made uh, the Black Rock City in the multiverse online plot platform. And people could uh, come to that place. They could talk to each other, communicate. They could see some masterclasses uh, through web. They could construct their installations, but online. They could play music. They could have chats. They could do, well, pretty much uh, everything that they normally did, but just not having the heat the sand and uh, all our other things uh, which uh, the desert <laughs> brings uh, on the place. Uh, and uh, that's very interesting uh, to see how the community of the burners um, reacted to that lockdown practice. Uh, on the one hand, uh, many people supported it. They uh, supported the very effort uh, of the festival management to create that very ecosystem online. And it really worked for many people, especially uh, the uh, best reason for making things online was in uh, um, letting in, let's say, uh, the people who wouldn't come to a desert. For example, I personally, I just couldn't <laughs> couldn't uh, take such heat and uh, all these things desert brings in. Uh, but I would like to become a burner, to become a part of all that society. And so it worked for many people. A new network uh, got developed. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, some people from that community uh, decided to come to the desert in person, uh, bodily, <laughs> being present, no matter how um, unprepared uh, that uh, track was, they came, they made a small, tiny burning man uh, and burnt it <laughs> for the tradition to stay alive. Uh, so uh, coming to the conclusion of our uh, tiny paper, uh, I would like to point out that very thing about personal presence, personal contact, and all the things that we are lacking today uh, due to the lockdown. Uh, if we were uh, in a real space uh, with your colleagues, uh, I think it would be much more rewarding because we could take a coffee break, uh, we could make a small chat about uh, the topics uh, of the papers. Uh, and if we speak about art and appreciation of art, it's pretty much the same thing because um, browsing, uh, let's say, some paintings of Mondrian online. It's a beautiful thing for education, for, let's say, taking some information in. But seeing a Mondrian himself hung on a wall, well, not him, the painting, uh, hung on a wall, uh, and having the sensation of the size, of the color, of the material, of the bodily presence of that very piece of art, it makes some transformation inside the viewer. And I think that that is exactly what we are looking for uh, when we come to see an art piece. And uh, how to make uh, art really work uh, in the online, how to make that transformative effect uh, effective, that's the big trick, that's the big issue. And uh, some of the cases we um, analyzed today give us, let's say, kind of answer about how to make that lockdown world avant-garde again. 
this is it. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, colleagues. Tatiana, Alexander, uh, thank you for the wonderful paper. And uh, yes, uh, just assessing all this experience we have been we have had so far and still do. And you know, you mentioned the coffee break. I recently spoke to my colleague and uh, yes, we understood that we can do anything on Zoom except having, having a coffee break. So we should think about it. Yes, it's another challenge. It's another challenge, you know. <laughs> well, actually, about uh, making a coffee break we, with your colleagues, you know, we could all take a cup of coffee and at least feel a bit of it. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, great <laughs> moment. <laughs> Zoom coffee break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, comments, questions uh, from yeah, just following the paper. So we have a comment from Lainey Burton. Uh, just a sec, there is certainly something to say for the effective dimension of the materiality of works experienced in the flesh as opposed to digital experiences. Yes, that is the exact question we with Tatiana are working on now. Uh, we even considered, uh, you know, the difference between a VR exposition of the museum and the real exposition. For example, the one which uh, Pushkin's uh, museum made with the tattoo. Uh, project which they had exactly at the moment of lockdown and the majority of people actually watched it online uh, through a VR exhibition uh, and uh, you know what I think about it personally uh, I think that once the lockdown is finally over uh, of course we will come back uh, to the gallery space to museum space finally However, all these uh, technological initiatives uh, made by big state museums uh, will uh, become a, to a, a good tradition as well, because a VR uh, clone of an exposition is a beautiful thing for the researchers, uh, for the uh, people who just couldn't make it uh, to come, and for ourselves in future, our future selves uh, who would uh, come back to reflecting about this or that exhibition and won't have the full memory of how it worked. And uh, having that as a VR archive is th the best initiative. I've been waiting for it for years and now it just came up. Yeah, thank you. There is uh, the comment following, uh, did they find the VR experience disorienting? Well, let's say, I think that's a question of training uh, because we have to get used to it. Uh, it's not easy uh, because, um, let's say, these screens are not too well adapted to our eyesight system a bit. Yeah, there are uh, problems, but I'm just trying my best <laughs> to fit in. Uh, Irina Sirotkina confesses uh, that she might sound technophobic, but watching art on screen makes uh, her feel like going to the restaurant in Zoom. Oh, I do understand you so, so well. Uh, I would even go further. I would say it's like dating in Zoom. <laughs> You know, when each one has a glass of wine and we can talk about many things, but well. <laughs> well, but it's great that you can have this opportunity, you know, <laughs> now we can have both. And it's, I think it's just expanded our horizons, not, not you know, <laughs> uh, let's not, not uh, be too technoph technophobic and let's get uh, a chance uh, for these uh, initiatives. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that the very, uh, let's say, presence of us here is the best proof of that we can all come over yeah. that public thing mm -hmm. and still have that digital togetherness. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, I think what was also challenging right at the beginning of the lockdown, uh, that before we thought like uh, off, uh, offline and online has the same logic. Now we understand that they have an abs absolutely different logics. And that's why what you said about museums and other institutions, what they learned from this experience, in the end, they will have probably two paths to uh, two, uh, you know, two programs, online and offline, because they are different. You're absolutely right. And uh, I would also like to stress the thing which Tatiana said at the beginning of the paper. And I see a question here from Rahul. Uh, it's hard to understand traditional painting or sculptures. Exactly, because once it is being transmitted online, it becomes moving image. 
uh, it's a film <laughs> it's not a sculpture anymore because our body does not respond to it once you come to a sculpture you try to feel the way that person or that abstract thing moves stands lies or whatever it does we do that uh, instinctively and when we have uh, a moving image on a screen well we watch it like a film or like a video art in the best way of it right yeah thank you yes i liked your point about digital togetherness though <laughs> Because this has been, you know, it has proved so productive for us. I mean, Zoom platform and other platforms. Right. Uh, Lainey says, the two passing for this relevant presentation, 